I've had several students lately ask me about my particular history in the martial arts and how I got started. So I brought out a few materials to show them and I thought I'd just share them with people that are long distance students of mine from other, other towns and other states. So here are a few things um, that I could show that I have that are quite old. I started in karate, Weichiru Karate in Brockton, Massachusetts about 1982 and I didn't hear about ninjutsu or the ninja until the early 80s. I was still quite a young kid then and Hatsumi started the Bujinkan in 1978 and I was eight years old then. I was just too young to know about it. About the time I was 10 or 12 I started to hear about the ninja uh, and I started to learn more about it. I was very interested. I know that Mr. Hayes uh, in the mid-70s started in Atlanta and then when he moved back to Dayton he started the Shadows of Ega Society. I did not come into the picture until around 1983. That was my first recollection. Here's a book, you know, the original book that I had. I think this is from 1982. Secret Art of the Ninja, it's a hardcover book, uh, obviously not available any, anymore. This is a really cool, this was my first exposure I found in a Kmart, very interesting. I just happened to see it in a Kmart with my mother. I was 11, 12 years old and I said, Mom, I, wanna, I want that book. It was really cool to see. That's how I started. Um, here's a picture of us at the Hayes house cooking sushi. I don't know when that was, probably taken. Uh, there's Mrs. Hayes in the background there. Uh, but this is when I started. I was very young. Just a kid, uh, excited about the ninja. I saw it on the television. Uh, Shoko Sugi was starting to come into the picture a little bit later on. And these books are really, was, were our only resources back then. We, we didn't have the internet back then. We didn't have DVDs back then. Our only source was books, so if you couldn't find a store with a book, you were in trouble. And of course, there were no dojos back then uh, of ninjutsu. Here is a, uh, here are all the Masubi journals. Masubi journal was a journal that came out in the early 80s uh, for Mr. Hayes. Here's one. I think it stopped in the late 90s. This is the last one that I have, which is from 1997. And as you can see, these go way, way back. There's just hundreds of articles in here. Uh, I want to see here where it started. I have some old ones in the back here. These are probably from, you know, those are from the 90s. I'm just trying to see when these are from. Here's one from 1985. That's probably, I think I had a few from earlier from them, but I'm not sure I don't have them with me. So this was our way of getting information about the ninja were these, you know, these magazines that came out that were published by Mr. and Mrs. Hayes way back then. And you can see in the back, these were these seminars that you could go to. You had to travel around the country and fly for out for a weekend in order to get these, inf the information that you wanted. There was no other way of getting it but by book. Again, there was no internet. So we would have to spend the money, save the money as kids to fly out. I flew out when I was a teenager to go to these seminars by Mr. Hayes, um, the, called the Warrior Quest Intensive Seminars. Uh, and the first one I went to, I think, was 1985. And I continued from then on. Then I, I don't know where it is, um, in 1988, uh, in volume 12, number two issue here of March and April, uh, I did an interview with Mr. Hayes. So this is when I was again still a kid and I, again the only way to know about this stuff was to correspond. So here is an interview that I did with him asking him about how long it takes to become a teacher, a little bit more about the organization, how I could get involved, uh, how people can actually meet him, uh, would I be able to do this as a teenager? What, was the, what were the age restrictions? Uh, I asked him about how long it would take here to complete the training or to become a teacher. 
and uh, it was just a very interesting time. I was very fascinated by then, and Mr. Hayes was quite a large celebrity. He was the one that basically brought the Bujin Khan and Ninjutsu to the U.S. He brought Hatsumi over here, so he was the catalyst that started it all for most of us in the West that were fortunate enough to be around then. And then I went to a Warrior Quest seminar here. This is from the Shadows of Iga Festival. Uh, this is from, I don't know the date, 1988. Here's one from 88. Uh, and we would have to travel. In this case, this one was in the German town, the old barn dojo that we used to train at. So again, we'd have to fly out here as teenagers, spend the money, and we would train for two or three days on the weekend, and then we would have to go home. And it was very covert. He just gave you a map of how to get there and just expected you to show up, and that's how you would train. The prices back then I was, I was looking at are not too different than now. I, I'm always amazed when people complain about the prices of seminars. Uh, but back then, they weren't much different than they are now. Uh, a few hundred dollars to train for the weekend. And it hasn't changed much since then. So people really shouldn't complain about prices to train at seminars. Uh, here's a handout that we had way back then. Uh, in the 80s, here are a few techniques. These are my original notes from the Shoshin Sha Godai no Kata that we worked on that particular weekend. Uh, I, I used to like to draw pictures, so I would draw pictures of my training when I was a teenager just to learn because it was just easier to understand. As you can see, here are some drawings of just some simple katas that we did, the Chino Kata, Bogyu, uh, Suino Kata, Kano Kata, Hino Kata, and just a few drawings that I did as a kid, just to try to understand the concepts a little bit more. And then you would take random notes. It all went very fast on the weekend, so we didn't have a lot of time. Very, very interesting. Um, so at that time, I was heavily involved in the martial arts, and any seminar that came up, I would come to, no matter what. It was my, my life. It continues to be to this day. Uh, here is a seminar from 1992 with Mr. Hayes. Uh, where I got involved with uh, my teacher Mark Davis in the Boston Martial Arts Center. Mark's a great teacher, he's been around forever. So at these seminars here I met Mark and then I trained at the Boston School for quite a long time. Again, any time that Mr. Hayes would come around, we would find a way there. Here's one from the New England Inpo Society with Greg Kowalski in Wallingford, Connecticut. Uh, another one from New England Ninjutsu, where we trained with Koryo Muramatsu, who was an old Bujinkan instructor, well known for his uh, brutality, like Nagato is very powerful. So we would train, again, these guys would come over from Japan and be hosted for the weekend, and we would train with them as best we could. Then we would have to go home with what little material we had, and then we would have to practice it. Uh, here's a seminar from James Husfeldt up in Cape Elizabeth, Maine. He would often host quite a few things up there, so we would have to drive from the Boston area up to Maine to train. Here's a, uh, a Taikai from 1989, which I went to in New York and New Jersey. Um, Hatsumi Sensei used to come to the US frequently back then he doesn't anymore, but this was back at the heyday when books were flying and uh, the Quest video series came out by Hatsumi in the mid-90s so we could actually watch him in action on VHS videotapes, if anyone's old enough to remember those. This is when I trained at the Boston Aikido Dojo. I did that for a little bit. I wanted to try different martial arts, so as well as karate, I wanted to try uh, Aikido because it, it fit with what we had uh, with Mitsunari Kanai, who was a student of Weishiba. I got to train with him for a while. Aikido, I, I still enjoy to this day. It wasn't quite the same as ninjutsu, but I respect all the martial arts. So it was very interesting to see all this old material. Here's a seminar we did uh, with Mr. Hayes teaching in Boston there. Uh, Again, $75 for the day was not too much to ask to train for the weekend with a 
martial art legend such as himself. Here's one I went to with Mr. Hayes in northern New York, in Hudson, New York. We had to travel to the Storm King Bujin Khan Dojo to, to train on uh, hojutsu rope and some martial arts. So this is a very interesting seminar at the top of a mountain in New York. So difficult to find these places because they were in the middle of nowhere. There were no real directions. There was no Google Maps back then. So you just had to find your way for this knowledge. It wasn't easily available. Here's a seminar I did with Doran Navon, uh, who was the first non-Japanese student to become a Shihan. He doesn't train anymore. Uh, very well respected. So this one was in 1993. As you can see, very, very powerful individual. Here's another one from, I don't know when this is from. Uh, this one was in Randolph, Mass., which is interesting. This is the closest one that ever came. I was born and raised in West Bridgewater, Massachusetts. This was the one that was close to me, so I didn't have to take a plane. I could just drive an hour to get there. A lot of weekends. Here's a Tai Kai from 1992 I went to. Um, this was at the CNN Center in Atlanta. Uh, Bud Malmstrom hosted the Tai Kai that year with Hatsumi Sensei. Very interesting. So much fun. So, mu so many good memories. A lot of good people that we met back then. Really interesting. Uh, here's another seminar we went to with Mr. Hayes. In this case was 1994, probably hosted by Mark. Uh, yeah, the New England Ninpo is what he was called back then. Here's another one from Wallingford with Greg Kowalski. Don't know what we trained at with this one. I'm not sure, probably just some random martial art here. Here's another one uh, going up to Dennis's dojo up in Derry. He would host a few things with Mark on occasion in the 90s. There's another Tai Kai I went to. This one is from 1993 uh, in Washington, D.C. We had to drive out there August 12th through 15th. Most of these seminars were two or three days long, and you would just do a lot of intensive training outdoors, and then you would have to go home and, again, try to absorb what you learned. There were no dojos, really. I was too young to move to Ohio at that point. I didn't move to Ohio until 1999, so I would have to fly out to train with Mr. Hayes. Let's see, here's one pricing structure of the Boston Dojo back then. This is a certificate from the NRA. I guess I got pistol shooting, 1992. Here's another one with Mark. So there was a lot of stuff back then, a lot of history. Um, these old books that we had back then, again, were all that we could get our hands on. This is an original copy of Ninja Realms of Power. Uh, let's see what they, don't know what year this is from. This is 1986. This is all you had back then was print. Can you imagine how much more advanced we would be if we had the internet back then? We just didn't have it. We did not have the internet back then, so all we had was the print. And you guys know, I've said this a thousand times, you can't learn as well from a book or a DVD. It's possible to learn, but you can't learn as well as training at a school. So if you can find a school in your area, I recommend it highly. There's another old book. Um, collaboration between Hatsumi and Hayes. 1987. Uh, you know, now we have these great DVDs by Hatsumi to learn. Um, back then there were the Quest videos, the videotapes, if you remember, the series of videotapes by Quest. Uh, that was the first action we could see. The Ninja Warrior tapes by Mr. Hayes in the mid-80s, and then the Quest series came out much later from there, and we could learn... Um, we could learn all these different moves and see them because it's very different than in a book. And then now we have the internet, we have all this technology now, so we don't have to go back and you know, look through all these articles to learn things. Although there's still a lot of great information here from way back in the 80s and 90s when I started. 
Nowadays, it's easy, it's convenient to come to a dojo an hour away, 10 minutes down the street. What I would have given. Um, I moved from Massachusetts to Ohio to Dayton in 1999 to become a student of Mr. Hayes and uh, worked with him for many years. Started our dojo down here near Cincinnati in 2007. We're about at the, almost at the 10 year mark now. So I've been doing this for a long time, decades, and yet I still, to this day, am learning new things every day. I'm sure in your training group, wherever you are, you're learning new things too. And you're taking advantage of whatever you have. All we had back then was print. So now with the internet, you have to be careful. There's a lot of junk out there, but YouTube videos, all these things can help aid in your training. Mr. Hayes has a series out. Uh, Manaka has a series out. Tanamura has series out. Everyone has DVDs out. So whatever offset of the Bujin Khan or Ninjutsu that you want to study, make sure that you find those materials and they will help you. They will help you. Of course, you can't beat, of course, you cannot beat, is to have a dojo to train at yourself. If you can have find a dojo to train where there's real, real weapons and real people to train with, that's always going to be your best option. But the second best option, if you live out in the rural, rural areas or in the inner city and there's just nothing going on, if you can, try to find a teacher that knows a little bit. Um, you're not going to find too many people around as old as me what that started in the 80s or 90s, but you might find someone that's pretty new that started after 2000 that would know what they're doing. And train with them if you can. Uh, spend the money. We used to spend thousands of dollars flying all over the country to find this stuff. Uh, the, the times where I trained with Hatsumi, I would spend thousands of dollars just to train. So don't complain if your monthly fees are $150 a month or whatever they are. Uh, embrace that. Embrace whatever you can find. This stuff is rare and there's so much old material out there that's not available anymore that's lost in print and that's dying out. So if you can find a teacher, you know, without going to Noda City and finding Hatsumi, find a teacher in your area if possible. Or go to the internet and see what you can find, but be skeptical of what you see. So sharing a few of these memories, I hope, um, hope this has inspired you and in somehow to continue your training or to, uh, you know, your, your history starts from this day. So if you want to start training right now, go for it. You don't have to have started in the 80s and 90s. Most of us have quit now. Uh, there's very few of us left that are still around from that time. But you can create your own legacy, your own time, your own dojo where, where you are. So take your time and find your passion. It's never too late to begin martial arts. It's never too late to start now, start today, in this year, and make this your first year and save your materials so that you can share them one day with your students and sons and daughters. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have a great day.